What is happening? What's up, fellas? What's happening? Lots happening. Lots happening. I'm excited, man. I'm um <clears throat> I want to thank you, Al, for pushing us to um a little more structured format and and really allowing us to kind of sift and sort through the topics that that we are are seeing that are that are really relevant and important uh, that's happening um, in the world and in in the industry and and also um, either. Uh, with us at EXP or not, but just just kind of what what's out there, right? What what the headlines and uh, give us an opportunity to to really unpack it uh, from our you know combined experience and perspective over you know the last two decades plus in this industry and, and what we're able to see and being able to give uh, give uh, you know not just not just Honey Badger Nation, but really the entire industry, kind of our our thoughts and perspective and, and ways to maybe think about it and, and what it means and what it means to us and what it means to them moving forward. So I'm uh, yeah. excited for, for, for the new, the new format. Yeah. Me too. You know, just to give some context, um, you know, first of all, we're glad to be back on the one big fire podcast. Um, I don't remember if it was 2018 or 19. I can't remember when we fired that, that up, but um, we got busy recruiting some agents and, uh, and, and got away from, really just the, the, the principles that we need to be sticking to, which was really delivering, you know, relevant up to date, you know, content to our audience to help them grow their business. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not regretful of anything, but except we, we probably should have kept it going, but we're back. And uh, I want to kind of start out by saying, you know, the whole reason that the, the, that this podcast was named the one big fire podcast goes back to 2015 our mastermind, Mr. Jay Kinder, his famous words in yeah. Aspen, you know, and it's fun to think about. This is almost nine, nine years later, almost 10 years later. And um, I believe that, you know, uh, we've, we've exceeded where we thought we would be in that one big, how big that this one big fire actually became. And I'm proud of it. And um, I'm excited for the for the future. So, before we dig into these topics, because they are hot, I uh, want to talk about. Um, make sure you go to HoneyBadgerNation.com and check out our agent to CEO uh, event that we have coming. It is absolutely going to be fire. It literally keeps getting better and better every single day that we add uh, another speaker. We add, you know, um, another another component to it that it's going to make the experience so mind-blowingly great so we uh we now have um we're having actually in addition to rock and rescue and gary lavox which is on night two uh we've we've booked another country singer for night one and he's he's awesome uh tyler reed he's actually opened for us for rock and rescue in the past and he's gonna be doing a private show at the farm that's the name of it we're not doing it at a farm agent to see <laughs> will not be at a farm but it'll be at the farm which is in uh, downtown Cleveland, uh, the Flats, East Bank of the Flats area. It's a, it's a brand new building that they built for country music, but we're transforming it into a business transformation uh, venue for two days, um, September 18th and 19th. So make sure you go to uh, grab that. You can also go to agent to CEO CLE.com and grab your tickets because they're going fast. There's going to be only a hundred people in that room. We're cutting it off at that. And um, it's going to be awesome. So yeah. let's dig in, boys. Let's dig in. So, um, yeah, really, really hitting these these topics. And, you know, we sifted and sorted through through multiple multiple topics that we really wanted to dive into. And, and that, uh, like we said, we thought were hot and relevant to, to kind of what's what's happening right now. And and obviously, first and foremost, um, you know, the bigger picture with with Biden dropping out of the race you know, how, how are we seeing or, or thinking that that's really going to affect uh, the housing market? Yeah. Well, I honestly, you know, I get fascinated with, with politics sometimes to, 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 uh, to a fault because it pulls me off of the, the focus on business. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but it's, it's fascinating. I mean, it's, it's nothing more from, fascinating than now. <laughs> I mean, you know, I didn't think that it could get any more fascinating after the last few years. Yeah. But, it certainly is fascinating. And it made me think back to the last election that I felt like, you know, it was, it was, it was um, Trump and Hillary. 
when they were going at it. It was 2016, and it was like right during Rock and Rescue. I remember I put a bill, billboard up, and it went, you know, it all kinds, of, it caused all kinds of problems because people were talking about leaving the country if Trump was elected, or they were going to leave the country if Hillary was elected. And there's just this division that's so deep. It's fascinating. It's it's a shame in some ways, but it's also fascinating. So we want to bring you guys, you know, the information that what, what are our opinions on what's going to happen during this newest election cycle that's coming. And so I'm going to try to find, I actually had the wrong slides up. So um, I'm looking for that and I'll share my screen. What do you guys think? I mean, as far as the election goes, I mean, I, I think um, it looks like uh, Trump's probably going to win. <laughs> I mean, it does, I don't see a way for the Democrats to recover. This is a colossal fuck up on their part. But, um, you know, they waited way too long to uh, name whoever they're going to name to run against Trump. Maybe that'll work to their advantage because, you know, <laughs> but nobody's going to know who that person is. So, you know, I think that the whole assassination attempt, uh, you know, brought a lot more unity to uh you know, Trump side. I think a lot of a lot of people moved over to uh, this is definitely corrupt <laughs> and uh, it's out of control. And maybe I was on the wrong side. So again, whether what side you're on or not, I don't really care. But you know, it, it seems like that's the direction it's going um, as far as the election goes. And I think you know, for real estate, that's going to be good. I think all all the things that Trump had put in place, the cost segregation, and some of those things that um, that are back on the table already. But that's going to be all good things for real estate. Yeah. And the economy. Well, what, is, what do they say, Jay? Uh, people vote with their wallets. <laughs> right. I mean, you saw the stock market take a huge rally uh, right after that assassination attempt. Um, you know, the experts in the research we've been doing um, are, are, are showing that, that mortgage rates are going to ease a little bit. We'll get into that here in a minute. But yeah, so check this out. Eight of the last 11 presidential elections i'm gonna blow this up so i can see it geez um they've had decreased rates so the only time that that um it looks like decreased leading up to eight on the last yeah um leading up to that's the key leading up to so um it looks like that according to this chart they will decrease slightly again but they're, they're calling that from that on the just on the economic side of things as well so i'm curious what do you guys think i i've been saying that if 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 they were to lower them they don't have to lower them into the threes and fours or anything like that i think if we got close to low six high fives 5.9 5 mm -hmm. that's going to be a jolt that's the only, that's the enough jolt that we're going to need i believe um to really, you know, kickstart this back again. The other factor we have to remember, which we're going to talk about in a minute, uh, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, is, is you know, what, what's happening on August 17th with the settlement being, uh, you know, enforced, the, the negotiation of the settlement actually being enforced throughout our industry. And we know that um, this, is, this is also a very statewide thing. Each state has to make their own move so to speak each brokerage has to you know have their own set policies what forms to use what they can't use and it's 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 pretty freaking chaotic right now i mean when you think about it um it's not business as usual um i believe it will pass uh you know and, and we're gonna get back to whatever that new i hate to use this this uh this covid term but the new norm in real estate um we're not gonna see what that looks like until i would say like midway through 2025 yeah. And, and like you said, don't want to get too ahead of it. I think, you know, still still looking at kind of, you know, um, you know, president, you know, election years with with the housing market. And, and obviously there's that, you know, a lot of conversation. I know we all all three of us talk to a lot of agents and you look at, OK, well, what do the statistics say? Right. Going back and look at the statistics. Right. So we know they tend to, to lower the rates a little bit. Um, I don't think we want it too low. Um, obviously home sales up in every election year, you know, the year after, um, and, and home prices up except for back in the eighties. So I think we'll still, still a little bit of that. The only thing that's kind of concerning and I had a really good conversation with Alex, um, our, our very good friend, Alex Piak a couple of weeks ago about this. And he's like, man, 
he said, we have to be careful. He said, because just, just kind of even what he's experiencing in Frisco, which is, I think we can all, <laughs> Frisco, Texas is probably one of the hardest real estate markets in the country, right? Just from everybody, the best of the best are here doing the best of the best here in, right? And doing everything. And so um, he's like, man, he said, we want to be careful. He goes, man, he goes just in, in, you know, back to having clients back up in, in the Northwest and, and just conversations around like, bro, like, I, I can't believe the prices are the prices. And it's like, it just doesn't make sense that they are as high as they are and still in kind of a, a basic economic 101 of supply and demand. And so like, if it does kickstart a little bit of a demand, what does it already do to, in some opinions, artificially overpriced house values? What does that do? Does it push them up even more? And you're talking about from, from an affordability side of things, like, is that a problem we want to deal with? So it's, it's just interesting of, of how to navigate. But I think looking at, you know, the housing market as a, as a whole, um, I don't know. I mean, we all got to ride through seven, eight, and nine, man. I just, you know, and, and we've said before in these conversations, right. Necessarily doesn't repeat itself. It is, it is cycled. So it's like a, a, like a close cousin. So like, where, where are you seeing, we know the data shows that rates come down. We, we see where home values should go up. Home prices went up as well. Like, What's y'all's take on on that if if those those trends in election years tend to hold true? Man, I mean, we, we're certainly I mean, we're trending for what, three point eight, nine million home sales, which is the lowest it's been in. I don't even know, 15 years, something crazy like that. So, you know, I think the original consensus at the beginning of the year was four point eight to five point one million million, which would have been kind of par with what it was last year and 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 we're way below that so inventory is going up across the country slowly um you know how, how does how i don't and i don't know the answer to this how does how does the you know uh, uh, how does the um what is what is trump going to do specifically to tame inflation and not you know and housing affordability already being an issue and if lowering the rates is going to drive up values of homes and drive up, you know, um, the cost of housing, that's a problem. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what they do. Um, but my anticipation is they're not going to lower rates dramatically. If we see 5.95 ever in the next couple of years, I think we'll be lucky. Um, but that's, you know, that's a, it's an, it's an interesting conundrum that we're in because home sales are down significantly. So is it headed towards a crash? Probably not, but, um, certainly homes are staying on the market a little longer, receiving less offers, and that's probably likely to continue, I would guess. I don't, I don't see how you can um, implement something that's going to change that. You know, obviously not, you know, printing $4.8 trillion and putting it into the economy um, will help with the Republican side of things versus the Democrats. Um, but we've never seen that kind of money printed ever in history. So that's, you know, that's why we're where we're at. But what what happens from here? I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell because there's no real place you can go back and look at that much money being printed and what happened in the housing economy. Are you muted out? <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. A lot of that stimulus is coming, you know, as a result of, you know, the, the, the pandemic, though, right? Like a lot of that cash, you know, was approved and, and in, infused into the uh, market four years ago which started the cycle right you know, of this of the of what we're dealing with right now question you're, i mean you make the good point i don't know the answer to it you would hope that by lowering the rates the people that said hey i'm not moving they decide to move which then loosens the market up so there's more flow coming in uh we are starting to see more foreclosures right now we are starting to see more delinquencies someone a friend of mine put a post up and he's like you know the stock market everyone's everyone's 40k is double what it was in 2020 and you shouldn't be complaining i'm like look credit card debt is out is is just rising like crazy right now and people's savings accounts are depleting that's that's what's happening to real americans right now mm -hmm. so you know we we will see uh we're we're, we're definitely not swamis that we can look in a, a crystal ball and, and, and say what's going to happen but Safely, I, John, if you want to, I think I pulled the next slide up just to kind of share um, the other thing is the mortgage 
Oh, so that was mortgage rates. Excuse me. Let's see here. Did, did it did it change on the screen? No. No. Maybe it's like a fr a freezing type of thing when when I share. Oh well. Um, we'll we'll figure out how how to share these slides one at, at some point. But um, I'm on the tab that it's on and and flipping it, but it's not showing it for some reason. How about now? No, cancel that out and just do a reshare, and then we'll be able to pull it back up. Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 What else, guys? Yeah. So I think kind of you kind of alluded to it, right? With um, you know what's what's happening with uh, the commission sharing. Obviously, you know EXP is ending. Um, you know, just a couple of days prior than what is set for August seventeenth. Uh, EXP's you know share you know uh, ending August fifteenth, and you know kind of kind of to the point it's kind of floating around the internet like it's a big surprise like we all know it's all, it's coming so you know you look at you know based upon NAR settlement you know the changes affect August 17th um, uh, uh, not allowing listing brokers making offers <laughs> on, on multiple listing services as a requirement that brokers and agents get contracts with buyers sign that they're working with before touring a home so like Give give some take on this and 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 obviously kind of what um, you know the talk a, a around the industry of of how things are going to be handled. Yeah, I mean, you know, we were all talking before we we came live here that we were trying to we were scratching our heads trying to figure out why was it why was it floating around the internet on you know social media platforms and you know whispers and rumors and people putting stuff up on you know lab code agents about exp making this big announcement that they're not going to be doing commission sharing after august 15th when on august 17th two days later no one's going to be able to allowed to do that so I, it was kind of just funny that uh we saw that floating around and and it was before i think something sort of got leaked that we were going to make this announcement that this is the day we're going to do it but i'm going to tell you this if you're if you're a real estate professional and your broker doesn't have a plan before that, yeah, you're, you're, you know, I, I would say that you're, um, you're doing your homework like l the night before the test is done. <laughs> too, you know, I mean, you, you, we, we definitely were ahead of it. Leo got on that live. What did we say? There's fifty thousand people on that live, and that wasn't just conjecture. That was straight, real talk with action behind it. His team uh, got ahead of this thing with forms we have um some of the top mls's in the country saw the forms that we're we're putting out and we're like everyone should should take what e exp's forms and just duplicate them for your brokerage i think it was rob uh mm -hmm. the notorious rob um can't remember that guy's name but that's a good pod or it's a good uh blog that he's got yeah um the notorious the notorious and, yep yep and and so you know, we're definitely ahead of it. Um, you know, what's what's really interesting, this was actually just brought up. We're bringing a huge team aboard. In fact, this team that's coming aboard is uh, probably going to land itself in the number one or two spot in teams with 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 the XP Realty. And that's how they're doing over a thousand transactions. Um, just absolutely killing it. Got to meet Matt, uh, the gentleman. And, and, and basically their agents were all on this call and their, their number one question was what do you have prepared for us so that, to handle this when this all hits and and i gave them obviously honeybadgernation.com they can they can sign up and take the chba if you haven't taken the chba course yet get, get in there and take it you know like they and then they asked me hey um because this guy knows I think he was a Kinder Reese client at one point and he comes to me and says, Oh yeah, I, I, you know, I can't wait to, you know, reconnect with Jay. And he's like, can you share with all of my agents how much you paid for that? Those courses when, when you were actually a coaching client, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I mean, it was tens of thousands of dollars to be a member and, and you get a free membership and you need to take advantage of it. Cause it's going to carry you right through this. We've been getting buyer agent reps signed since 20, 11 maybe you earlier jay john when you guys were running the brokerage maybe you were doing it earlier but we started when you guys came out with the chba i trained my whole team i flew my whole team to dallas we did the boot camp and they came back like you know 
they came back like uh, like Navy SEALs ready to right, ready to hit the beach, and 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 they were trained. Was it Reese always says, you're you're you know you're either um, trained on how to disarm a bomb, dis- oh, disarm a bomb, or you're not. There's no in between. <laughs> and the same is going to go for what happens after August 15th, or uh, excuse me, August 17th. You're either going to be trained on how to get a buyer's agent uh, uh, agreement signed with your your fee negotiated up front, or you're not. And you nailed it in that text thread, Jay. You said there's there's about to be a, a Darwinian thinning of the herd, and it's true. Yep. I mean, there, there's a. I mean, I, I have to imagine just just based on the statistics of home sales by agents and the average number of homes sold by an agent that there are a tremendous number of agents that just have their head in the sand and have no clue how to get a buyer representation agreement signed. I mean, I see it in comments on all these other threads and all these other groups. Like, why would I work with buyers if I'm not going to get paid a commission anymore? Like, really? Like, that's that's that was you, you really thought and then actually type that into a post. Like, I mean, it's in, it's incredible. And, and we've we've always kind of known and said this, you know, that the, 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 there's a large percentage of real estate agents that probably should not be in the industry. And this, if anything, will, you know, will we weed a lot of those people out. So I think, you know, there, there will be I don't know what percentage I can't even I could even speculate, but. But I would think 10, 15 percent of the agent, agents that are out there are probably just going to give up. Um, and that's not a bad thing. You know, I think that the professionalism of the industry goes up. The standards for being a professional um, go up when your skills have to go up. And so, um, you know, the winners in this are going to be the, the people that go through CHBA, that have been trained, that know how to articulate their value, that understand, you know, how to how to make this offer to a buyer I and understand how to negotiate with another agent. This is going to be fun if you know how to negotiate. Um, <laughs> you know, it, you know, it, it's, it goes back to, you know, when, whenever you're only doing one deal every month or two, um, you need that deal worse than the buyer or seller needs that deal sometimes. Um, but when you're doing a lot of, of, of real estate deals um, and you're truly negotiating on behalf of your client, you know, when you talk to every, every sell, every person that has a listing, I'm going in there trying to cut their throat and get get everything for my buyer. I'm going to get them a discount on the house. I'm going to get my commission paid. I'm going to get all that stuff. That's that's what you do as a real estate agent is negotiate on behalf of your client, which includes your fee being paid by the seller now. And so, you know, I I, I love I love change, man. This stuff, you know, I geek out over it. So like for me, this would be just nothing but more fun. Yeah, I think it's I think it's two parts there just to just to kind of summarize the two the two points that you guys made you know the the number one is is the skill set right the skill to be able to have a process to have a system to be able to follow that articulates your value and and so um i think that's that's the key component and and you know then it steps back into like you said the negotiation side of things and i think for a lot of real estate agents there's you know the one book that I default to is, is, you know, um, Chris Voss, right. And never split the difference because if you understand a couple of his core concepts and this is where CHBA comes in, right. And this is where you have to be able to get the client to believe that you have the best system and the best service to help them solve whatever it is they're trying to solve. So you go back to our job as, as true professionals and true experts. Our job is to help them become problem aware. Our job is to help them become solution aware. And then our job is to help them understand that we are have the service aware in the, in the system aware to help them achieve the solution that they're looking for to overcome the problem that they have. And you got to connect all three dots for them because they're just not aware. And that's where CHBA, a proven process to be able to articulate your value. And then you hit them with the question, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, do you guys believe that this is the best process and best system to help you guys accomplish what you're wanting to accomplish X, Y, and Z by this time frame? And they're like, damn, yeah, that's right. Right. And that's what you're looking for is like, Jay, you don't want to hear Jay, you're right. You want to hear, dude, your system is right for what we're trying to accomplish. And I think, you know, developing the skill set and there's um there's this great um uh chart that my coach coach Matt shared shared with us and he talks about you know what we're looking for is we're all looking for a state of flow 
right? To where things feel effortless and we're moving into just, just that kind of flow state. And that's kind of the balance of <clears throat> taking on a challenge, but also having the skill set to meet it. And what, what he, what he talks about is that anytime that we feel anxious or concerned or nervous about the future, which, which is, which is anxiety, right? We're, we're, we're fearful of the future. And, and the reason we feel that way is because we don't have the skills to, uh, to meet that challenge. So if you're a real estate agent right now, or just anything in your life that you feel anxious about, it's because you don't have the skill set to overcome the challenge that you're, that you're facing. And so if you're an a agent right now, that's anxious, you need CHSA, CHBA, you need negotiation training. Like you need to commit to developing those skills and develop the skills to where now that anxiety is gone. And, and so like, you guys, I mean, the things that we're talking about right here are two fundamental tools of being a true expert moving into the future. And you just got to have a process, man, and you got to have the the skills. You know, in, in kind of thinking about what we were just talking about with why people are putting these posts up and why it's looking like it's a surprise. I was listening to a podcast at the gym uh, yesterday. And I made this quick note. And what they were talking about was the guy asked a question. And I guess this guy like predicts a lot of stuff. Uh, that happens in the future or whatever. And he said, he said, I asked a group of people, um, do you wish that the civil war never happened? And I guess, depending on the, you know, the group of people you're asking, if you're asking a bunch of veterans who've been, you know, hurt or whatever, they'd be like, no, yeah, no, I, I would, I would not want the civil war to happen. But when you look back at history, it had to have happened. And look, look what came of it, you know, um, America, you know, became a whole new country of, uh, of industrialized. We were, we were, we, we started becoming a superpower at that point because of what happened. Right. But he compared it to like where we're at right now. And if you kind of look at this, like the three of us, we made it through 07, 08, 09, 2010. And if you're a real estate professional listening to this right now, and you made it through those years and you're still in the business. First of all, congratulations to you. Yeah. Second of all, it's kind of a rite of passage. <laughs> this is where I'm going with this. Okay. Like we have PTSD from 08. Mm -hmm. At least I do. Okay. You know, had one of my rental properties going to foreclosure, had to short sell it. My, my credit score went from 800 to like 475 or whatever. I couldn't get a loan for anything for a couple of years and had to rebuild. I, I didn't just lose my money. I lo lost my money and went in deep into debt. And, and so the, the, the way that they were talking about it in this podcast is like, everyone loves the result of who you become when you go through a rite of passage like that. But if you were to say, Hey, want to go, want to do it again? We're like, Nope, I'm good. <laughs> I want to go through that again. But the, the cool thing with this is that we are prepared. And if you're new to this business, you need to be prepared. This isn't a uh, fear mongering talk. This is you're about to go through a cycle that will be remembered forever in history. Um, and, and we will be made better for it. But we're going to lose. We're, we're gonna, there's some blood. There's going to be some blood in the streets on the way through this thing. Yeah. But let's not let's not sugarcoat it. Because a lot of people, I think they're they're burying their head because either a they didn't go through 08, 09. Like I don't know about you guys, but that that hit me like a ton of bricks pretty quick. Like what? The real estate market's crashing. I don't understand why. <laughs> we had all these these loans where you didn't have to qualify for 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 many years. I mean, we were we were uh, we were living like drunken sailors and pirates for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Duh! It's gonna catch up. And, and, and this is not the same situation. So please don't, don't mistake me for saying that, that this is a similar, but it is going to be another rite of passage. There's two camps here. You're either going to be trained to get your buyer's agent to pay the fee and run through red lights to want to work with you, or you're not. And if you're not, you're, you're still going to need to be skilled on the listing side to survive. And if you're not in either of those, you're gone. So, you know, kudos to to anyone who's taken that course or who has prepared themselves or you know i was talking to harley the other day 
some states have required buyer agency agreements for years. Like Virginia, I he had, he had told me, he's like, I don't know anything different. This is just what we've always been doing. Yeah. So there's going to be some states, I think, that if this was a required practice, they're not going to feel much of anything. But then yeah. the rest will. I think the thing too, man, is, um, you know, I've said this to to a lot of team team leads and, and I'm like, you know, man, we want agents with a little bit of experience and stuff. I said, do you? I said, I would, I would make sure that they have one key trait that they're coachable and that they've proven that they've been coachable in the past. If not, I would go after brand new agents because the reason I would go after brand new agents is that they don't know any different. Mm -hmm. You're teaching them the right way, the right process. They're not going to skip steps and they're going to follow the process the way it is and the way it's going to be to thrive into the future. And so if you're a real estate agent, you know, you're tuning into this and you lack the coachability trait, then you might think about doing something else because, um, you know, if you don't like change, you're going to like irrelevance even less. Right. Yeah. Well, let me ask you guys this question. What, what do y'all, what do you think, you know, this, this is the, the part that, that I think a lot of people are also scared, uh, a little bit worried and concerned about, you know, the, the weak listing agent that goes out and takes the listing and doesn't communicate to the seller. Oh no, you don't have to pay the buyers. You know, you know we can't offer it anyway. So no, you're not going to have to pay that. Like when you're negotiating with that agent before you take them an offer, you're, you're going to have to be really good at setting the table for, Hey, listen, if this, you know, we're going to need a concession for the, the buyer agent commission or this deal's not going to happen. And, and you know, th those conversations, how do you think these conversations are going to go between agents prior to an offer getting written? And what do you think, you know, the percentage of the time that that's going to be paid by the seller or not? What are y'all's thoughts on that? I, I personally think that, um, there, there's going to be, um, based on price range of the house, I think there'll be different conversations. Um, I believe that, uh, your weak listing agents to your, to your question or, or point Jay, uh, yeah, they're going to take that easy way out and not, not encourage, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the seller to offer a concession to pay for the buyer to use for however they want. But in this case, we know that it's going to be going to pay and compensate the buyer's agent, which the buyer's agency can't go away. It can't go away. If it goes away and buyers come in unrepresented, we're going to see lawsuits skyrocket. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's just what's going to happen. Okay. Because they don't know what the hell they're doing and they're going to go back. They're going to, they're going to feel like they got, you know, the short end of a stick on a negotiation. They were had, they got had by the listing agent who, was not representing them. And we're going to have, uh, we're going to have a shit show on our hands of litigation everywhere. And I, that's just my belief. So your skilled agents are going to put that, they're going to put the compensation uh, in, in as a, uh, uh, as a concession. And if they don't on lower priced homes, and when I talk about lower priced homes, I'm not talking about like dirt, dirt. I'm talking about your first time home buyer. I'm talking about your FHA buyer who doesn't have a whole lot of cash. I'm talking about your VA buyer who doesn't have a whole lot of cash sitting around. Some of them do, but most don't. And those two classes, if you're listing homes in the price ranges where you, you would you know see people taking loans out in, in those two categories, you need to have that seller concession in there. Otherwise, you know, we will start to see home sales in that category start to dip and go down. Mm -hmm. The other option and, and the other, I shouldn't say option, but the other thing that could happen would be you, you have more buyers just going straight directly to the listing agents. Many brokerages are saying, Hey, we, you know, cause how, how do you do a dual agency? You know, how you, you have to negotiate your fee with the buyer up front. Right. So what if they came directly through an open house that you were having you have an op opportunity to either A, represent them or B, not represent them and only represent your sellers, which is what I always did and I always practiced. And frankly, if it was me and I was running my own brokerage, I would say you're only representing the seller. The buyer is coming in unrepresented because we can't really negotiate our fee with them up front before showing them the house. What happens when they come through an open house? They see the house, they want to buy it. And like, oh, yeah, by the way, if you want to buy this, my, my fee is X percent. I don't think it can work that way. So what are your guys' thoughts on, on that? I had like a whole flurry of thoughts. <laughs> Just <laughs> right. So, so uh, say, say that again, Al, 
I wrote down what I had to say because I had three really good questions to talk about. Well, it was just really like your question was for the the the, the listing agents who are weak who are just going to go sign people up at whatever per, you know half per, you know half of whatever they would normally have charged and not put any sell any concessions, right? Any buyer concessions from us coming from a seller in there. How is that going to affect the yeah. market as a whole? So, yeah, so so th that's exactly where I was in my thoughts. So, um, you know, I look at it like this. So, like, the, the weak agents that are out there, they're still there. They're, they, they, they're the ones that overprice the home, right? So, you know, the listings in your marketplace, when you look at it, you're like, what the f Who priced? This is ridiculous, right? And you, you assume you assume two things. One, not a motivated seller, probably, or really stupid agent, right? Like, it's just a way overpriced, right? They didn't have the balls to tell them what they need to hear, or they took the listing at a price that's just unrealistic, right? So like that already exists today. So the the other option is if you're talking to a seller and if I'm representing the seller, I'm saying, hey, listen, let, let's let's go in at this price, this lower price and let's see what happens. Maybe they ask us to pay the concession. Maybe they don't, you know, depending on the price point. So you might see more aggressive pricing by at least three percent on homes and then people just see what happens in the offer and the negotiation and not offer those concessions. And I might use that if I'm talking to a seller that's wanting to push price where I don't think it's necessarily going to bring that. I'm going to be like, listen, you know, let's go in here. Let's not offer the concession. You know, you know, so that there's a, there's a lot in that discussion and negotiating with the seller on what, how to, you know, where to price the home and, and how you set the expectation of what's going to happen when we do get an offer. And then there's on the flip side of that, there's, you know, talking to a buyer and saying, listen, you know, you know, we're going to get you the best deal, the, you know, the, the, the best deal on the perfect home. That might be us offering above the asking price to cover those concessions, and it still might be a good deal. We need to look at the value of the home in the marketplace compared to, to other sales to make sure that we're not overpaying for a home. But in some cases where they're not, where they've opted to price that house and it looks like a really good deal at the price it's at, we might have to go in and ask, go above and beyond in order to get, you know, in order to get that home if that value is there. So you, there's, there's, you know, some conversations and setting expectations that have to be done. And it's no different than what we've always done, right? Like if you got a buyer, you know, but you're signing a buyer rep agreement, I say, you know, we charge 3%. We're going to ask the seller to pay that for you. Are you okay with that? They always say yes. Right. But like before I would go show a property, if it was like a code one and a half, I would be like, Hey, remember when we talked about it, there was a shortage of our commission that you might have to make up the difference. This is a home that's not offering um, um, are three percent, so we're going to need to ask them to pay the difference on this particular home. And so you just you, you have to just be um, you know communicating these things. Uh, um, where I where once again, most agents don't do a good job of that, and, and I think most of the good ones do, but most of the you know um, you know the weaker agents are going to struggle big time with this, right? Like, yeah, it's all about setting expectations. It is, man. I think this is so important, right? That we talk about, man, you got to have that consult on the front end and, and have these conversations on the front end. If not, and, and you know, if we've all gone through difficult conversation training, right? So you look at where difficult conversations, but you can, you can head a lot of that off if you have those conversations on the front end mm. and, and, you know, form that agreement. And then, so when that things pops up during the process, it's not a difficult conversation. It's like, Hey, remember we talked about that. This is the situation. This is how it's unfolding. And the problem that agents are untrained people, they just avoid that conversation yeah. on the front end. But it's an easy conversation on the front end before you get into the heat of it. Yeah. And, and then so now what, what a lot of agents are going to do, they're going to avoid that difficult. It's not difficult. Just avoid that conversation on the front end. Now it becomes difficult. And then they don't want to stand in the way of the buyer getting the home. So they're just not going to get paid. Right. And you can't do that very often. Right. right. And then that's what's going to that's what's going to continue to thin the herd because they're financially not going to be able to, 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 to be able to stay in the game. Yeah. It goes back to, if you're, if you were doing buyer brokerage agreements prior to showing properties before you probably were doing all this. And if you yeah. weren't, it's a big change for you, right? Yeah. Like that's, that's going to be, um, and, you know, there, what, what, you know, and, and I disagree with this, but I'm going to put it out there is like, you know, I've seen people comment, well, you know, the buyers are just going to go to the listing agent now since they can save all that money. Okay. No, they're not. They're not going to do that. They don't. They have, they could do that today. Go to the. You know, it's it was so far and few between when it, when uh, someone would come to me and want to buy from me and then try to negotiate the three percent down for me. They're like if they bought the house for me, I got paid twice. So there was no negotiating that. But even it, you know, that's just not how buyers think. <laughs> not. I mean, the number of buyers that actually came to me as a listing agent 
to buy for me specifically is so few and far between that I just don't ever see that that's going to be, um, you know, how buyers behave. It's no different than, than discount. Why most, why, why didn't, why do more people not go to Redfin agents and get a huge discount on the fee? Why? Because that's not, that's not what they're, they're not out there looking to get the best deal on the agent commission. They're out there to find the perfect home. And, you know, the agent that's able to help them do that is who they're going to, they're going to work with. So, you know, that's, um, it's interesting, certainly interesting. Um, but I, I do think, you know, you know, I, I think you might have this as a point to pull up out. Um, you know, I know we were looking at, at the articles in Inman about this as well as, you know, the prediction of, you know, you know, um, commission rates, you know, could fall as much as 30 percent. And I think that was specific to the buy side. And that, that seems like that's a potential, you know, a reasonable thing because of the agents that actually probably should be charging less. I mean, in all honesty. Like, you know, the ones that, that go in and negotiate, you know, they're, they're, they don't get their fee paid for by the seller. So they only get 1% or whatever, the, whatever they offer um, mm -hmm. or the seller can, or buyer was only willing to come up with X amount of dollars or whatever, you know, it's going to be a shit show. So um, it's, it's definitely going to be interesting, but there's going to be probably over time um, whittling away of the buy side commission to, you know, again, for the subset of the market, that's the weak negotiators. Yeah, for sure. So as we kind of kind of wrap up, we hit this uh, final point that we've got, and we've touched on it a little bit. And, and I think the first two topics, um, you know, kind of the election and, and, and historically what we've seen during election years, as well as the change on on you know the commission, everything that that goes into play um, at this point on August seventeenth, um, as we we really get into um, you know kind of the rest of the year and kind of what the that forecast really, really looks like. And, you know, you look at, you know, kind of home price forecasts already, like what we're even talking about in, in, and Al just kind of hit on this here a little bit with this slide. Yeah. Well, you know, everyone has an opinion and, and you can see, you know, from Fannie Mae to NAR to Zillow, what everyone's uh, opinions are, whether we're going to see appreciation, deep depreciation, the consensus is that there's going to be a slight rise in, in home prices for the next, which is kind of what we were, we were figuring. Uh, based upon what we're seeing here. Um, so the consensus average, which, you know, there's not a whole lot of accuracy because you got one, you got Fannie Mae at 4.8, you got Freddie Mac down here at, at half a percent. They're saying yeah. that, that prices would go up. That's a pretty, that's a pretty big gap in opinion right there. Um, yeah. But huge. Huge. So they're, you know, averaging, they're saying about 3%, which is like, that's normal. You know, there's, right. there's, no, there's nothing. I see abnormal about, about that. Right. Um, let's see if there's, there's a, a comment, a comment here on, you know, Ricky Cruz is saying stack listings at three, 4%, you know, I, I would do the same thing. And actually that's what I did before anyways. Like when, whenever I'm negotiating, um, whenever I'm presenting to a seller, our system for how we're going to sell their home for up to 18% more than the methods of traditional agents. At the end of that presentation, I tell them I charge 4%. Now we just have to determine what we want to offer on the buy side to the, the agent that's likely going to buy, find the buyer. And, and in, in the CHSA presentation, one of the laws is uh, understanding that 71% of the time a buyer, you know, the buyer for your home is working with another agent. They're represented by another agent. So we don't want to offer less to the, to the largest pool of potential buyers that are out there. This is one of the benefits of having MLS. So, you know, that's a, that's a, but I always negotiated what I charge for the things I'm doing to represent you separately than what we offered on the buy side in the MLS. That's how I charge 7%. So, you know, agents should do this. If you, you, you probably have a better chance of now charging a little more on the list side uh, for your services and, and, you know, than you did before. And so, you know, and so, some of these agents, you know, like what Ricky Caruth is saying, you're, you're, they're going to be increase their average commission. <laughs> yeah. Um, Again, down to skills and negotiation for sure. Hundred percent. I mean, you know, it it it's, it's the thing that we've talked about for years, right? Like, you need to wake up and go to bed thinking about listings. And this is what I, you know, just telling everybody. I would rather you guys have um, a problem of having a hundred listings in your inventory than not having any listings at all. I promise you, the better problem to solve is having a hundred active listings in your inventory than having no listings at all. Mm -hmm. And and so it's like anything and everything you do has to revolve around it. I know we're, we're really hitting on the buy side um, in this conversation today, which is important to know, to be able to how to position and negotiate it. 
But the truth of it, man, CHS and CHBA are the same thing. It's the same process. It's just a way to meet, find out their their goals, their challenges, articulate our value, and um, you know, get them to believe that this is the the best system to help them achieve what they're wanting to achieve. Another point I, I, I would make too is is agents that that decide, you know, to hell with the buy side commission and the agent on the buy side, um, and just you know, take the listing at a higher percent and then you know, don't set the seller up for success. If you become known in your marketplace as as the difficult, every listing that you have is going to be a damn negotiation nightmare from the agents that are representing buyers, they will steer them away from you. 100%. And that will happen. So, you know, that, you know, it, it, it happens today, even as it is. And there, there's something, you know, you know, right or wrong, you know, get into ethics and all that. But when you got a difficult agent, it, hey man, you know what? These, you know the the like in that article, the, the foundations in that neighborhood weren't built. You know that's the rumor, right? Like the, this neighborhood, the foundations weren't built too well. I don't know if I'd want to look at these or not. Like you will get steered steered away from uh, agents that um, make this negotiation process difficult for the agent that brings the buyer or the the buyer themselves in the negotiation. That will that's not who you want to become. And and there will be agents that absolutely. Um, they dominate on the listing side and don't care so much on the buy side. But at the same time, I would never shoot myself in the foot. I want to double in the deal. So, you know, there's, you know, a percentage of the time that you're going to double in deals. And now you're not, now you know, you're doing it for just 3% or 4%. So I don't, I don't think agents, too many agents are going to um, not prepare the seller to have to at least put some, some type of compensation um, uh, or concessions for the, uh, for the buy side. hundred percent. Hundred percent, man. I think you always have to remember too, like what you said. We don't want to. We don't want to develop that reputation that we're we're a difficult challenge. We're not going to compensate and pay. And and to your to your point, right? It's like, well, that's unethical. Well, let, let's let's understand something. Compensation drives behavior, and and people will navigate and make changes and do things ethical, unethical, based on compensation. And so, just as a reputation, which is your brand. Right. You don't want your brand in the marketplace and other agents to look at you and go, I would never want to work with that guy because like he doesn't compensate. He's an absolute difficult mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and like we need to do everything to stay away from him. Right. Doesn't you matter right or wrong, but that's yeah. that's that's just human behavior. Yep. No, here's another interesting thought, too. So, um, you know, because buyers have been able to get in a car with any pop tart agent that'll go show them a house and go look at homes and, and kind of get engaged in the process without any friction for ever since in the in history, you know, majority of buyers that don't sign buyer, you know, have them sign buyer brokerage agreements. And that's been the process. Um, do we think there will be a fallout of certain segments of the market where buyers just say, you know what, F this, I'm not going to go meet with this agent and talk about a buyer brokerage agreement and sign this, you know, we'll just rent something. Is that, is that something that's potential, you know, potentially, could happen in, as far as buyers go. Well, so are you saying that that then they just decide they're not, not going to buy a house at all because they're not going to they're not willing to sign a buyer rep agreement? Is that what I, I don't know? Yeah, they, they say they, they, they get frustrated with the process. They don't they didn't like the agent. They didn't want to sign anything with them. Do they go find another agent or do they just say go yeah. rent a house instead of instead or what? You know, so some certain segments of, of the you know that that aren't sure that they really want to buy or not that could it could affect you know, whether they do buy or not, potentially. It's a super interesting, explaining it. I think it's a super interesting question, but I fundamentally don't believe that agents sell houses anyway. You're right. Like it, when, when a buyer needs to buy a house, it's for their needs. And, and if, it, if, if they have a high motivation to buy that house for whatever reason it is, then they're going to buy it. If the rates are there, they can afford the monthly payment. If the inventory is there for them to look and find something that meets most of their needs, nothing's ever going to meet them all. They're going to buy a house. So they're either going to buy it with representation or not. I think mm -hmm. it's, it boils right. down to that. And so when you think about educating our, our, our consumer base on the, the dangers of not having representation, right. none, of us is, none of us would be dumb enough to go into a litigation situation as a defendant or a plaintiff for that matter, without legal representation. And most of us would be, we wouldn't, we wouldn't we be wanting to find the worst attorney, the cheapest attorney in, in, uh, in, right. in the town. We're looking for the best. 
I always want the best representing me. Now, we all know that the best comes with a high dollar per hour, but they're worth every dang penny. My CPA is probably one of the most expensive CPAs in town, and I'm glad to pay his fee every single year because of the advice he gives me is is is, is gold. It's gold bars. It's 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 helped my family and I. You know, hey, you know, we, you, there are certain things that you just don't go in navigating on your own when you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, shoot, I mean, I, I'm, I'm I consider myself a you know a, a pretty knowledgeable real estate professional, and uh, I've made mistakes even as as like you know in, in buying mistakes and bought the wrong property. Maybe it, I didn't negotiate a, a, an inspection where I should have learned my lessons, right? But like, it, it, it's going to lead to a lot of litigation, in my opinion. Um, guys, I want to I want to share with you something that you guys taught me and gave me the gift. This, what I'm going to share is the secret weapon for buyers moving forward. If you're nervous, obviously we gave you the nugget CHBA, absolutely 100%. But I'm going to give you like a specific tactic that if you don't have this and your buy your your paycheck depends, let's say 50% of it depends on buy side transactions. This this will keep that thirty percent that the, the the industry thinks that we're going to be losing in your pocket. I'm going to let you know what that is in one minute. But before I do that, like how I did that there, if you're interested in joining us at Agent to CEO, we have the CEO of the largest real estate company in North America, uh, Leo Pereira. He's amazing. We have Kendall Bonner speaking. We have we have the two handsome gentlemen, John Kitchens. I don't know, 16,000 coaching calls with the top 500 teams in the nation. Jay Kinder, number two agent in the world, selling 500 homes a year. That's the that's the room you need to be in if you want to navigate through this next rite of passage. And just go to agent to CEO, -E com, And then we're going to be partying with Gary Lavox the, uh, on night two with, with some Rascal Flats, Dusty Black. Um, Dusty Black, dude, his, his new songs are phenomenal fire. dude he just put one absolute fire so he's gonna be coming back to cleveland his second trip back to cleveland to hop on the stage of forward but here's where here's the number one thing you're gonna need and this this is gonna make it infinitely easier buyer's advantage program buyer's advantage do you have a buyer's advantage program or do you not if you do not have a buyer's a, a, a buyer's advantage program, the good news is you can message any of us. We can have a conversation about um, how you can get become part of our community. If you're already part of our community, then uh, we we have that for you, um, and and we have that resource that you can you can rip off, duplicate, change it, make it whatever you want. But the buyers the buyers advantage program was the easiest thing to present to a buyer. And how did you what? How did you realize all the value built that right? Like how, what forced you guys, there was a point in your career. You were like, we need a better way on the buy side to articulate our value. Yeah. Dude, we, were, we were taking Jay Abraham principles, um, you know, risk reversal, um, you know, articulating your value, all of that. And then took all the things that we do for a buyer that had never been really done before and put that into a document to, to, for us to be, it was, it was a presentation on here's the here's what we do to represent you in the sale. It was our first kind of take on a buyer presentation when they didn't have one, uh, when nobody had one. And so, um, yeah, it, but it absolutely it's it's uh, it's everything we teach. We've been teaching forever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let me ask us about that. Um, like I said, if you're part of our community, uh, you know, reach out. Our staff will get you a copy of uh, one of ours. I know mine was slightly different than uh, Jay Kinder Real Estate Experts, which was different than Michael Reese's. And uh, we can, the cool thing is you, you put your own spin on what you yeah. want your advantage. What advantages are you going to give your buyer that they're not going to get? So yeah. it's the same. It, it, it was the first, the buyer advantage program was the first version of what CHBA is today. Um, you know, there, there's the CHBA presentation. It, takes all of the, you know, all of the factors over 80 different variables involved in the home buying process and allows you to break that down on the things you're going to do to, again, you're just building up the value uh, of what it is you do. The buyer's advantage program was the document that kind of went alongside that, that highlighted everything. And it was what they would sign first because it was all value add. 
And then next they would sign the buyer brokerage agreement. When you got to the buyer brokerage agreement, you've been articulating all this value that they're going to get. Um, and then you, you, you know, you, the script was very simple. It's like, we're going to, you know, our compensation, we charge is 3%. We're going to add, and I'm, I, what I would do, and I go back and forth a little bit, cause there's a little bit of more risk involved with this today, but I love risk reversal. Say, listen, we guarantee to get our fee paid for by the, by the seller, or we'll do it for free. That's, that would be the most gangster hundred percent close rate offer you could make. No risk. You have no risk. I'm going to represent you. I'm going to represent you on this deal. I'm so confident I'll be able to get the seller to pay pay our fee. Now, that might be in the form of raising the price or it might be built into the concessions that they offer. But we guarantee it that they will pay it or I'll do it for free. And that would be everybody says yes. You know, I mean, that's it. That's just what I would do. Um, and, and I would go to, I would go to negotiating on my, for, well, now I'm fighting for my commission. I'm negotiating. I, I'm a better negotiator than the other agent. I promise. And so, you know, if we come back and they still wanted the house and I couldn't get it done, then every once in a while you might have to do one for free, I guess. But, um, but that's, you know, that was, you know, again, learning these principles from Jay Abraham, we were taking that and putting it into our listing presentation, buyer presentation and, and creating, ways to show, make the value visible so they can see what it is that we do for our compensation. Love it. Fellas, I love the format. Great, uh, great talking points today. A lot of, uh, a lot of value. Appreciate you guys listening in. If you, if you love the new format, loved what we hit on today, um, hit us in the comments, get us some, give us some love. Um, also, you know, don't be afraid to, to throw out some things that you would love for us to touch on as uh, this is going to be the kind of the format for us moving into the future. So fellas, great job. Love it. And uh, let's keep rocking.